what brought you to Zorin? Because I know a lot of... It, it's, it's one of those more modern suggestions I've been hearing, and I haven't personally used it myself. Like, when I started using Linux... The suggestion, you probably heard this as well, Mint. Like, Mint is what everyone was suggesting. Or if yeah. you... Like, Mint, it looked like Windows 7. Or if you weren't going to suggest Mint, it would just be just use Fedora or something like that. Um, Zorin, though, like, I don't know how long it's been around for, but I definitely have noticed in the past maybe three or so years, it's gotten a lot more attention as, like, here is the thing that is, I guess, a good transition point. Oh, yeah. Like, Zorin is a fantastic... If you are used to Windows, like, I could probably get someone who had been using Windows as long as they weren't doing, like, a bunch of coding and technical stuff mm -hmm. to swap to Zorin, and they'd be perfectly fine. And you, you mentioned Linux Mint. Mm -hmm. It's funny. Linux Mint was actually the reason I looked for a different OS because I was I had a all in one HP all in one PC that I was... Um, I'd fixed up. I was going to sell. I was like, you know what? I'm going to put Linux on so mm. if I'm going to sell, let's try to get more people using Linux. And I installed Mint on there, and mm. it would not download any Wi-Fi drivers. Like, or it just couldn't find them at all. And I, I was searching, I looked everywhere, and I was, like, downloading here and there. And I was eventually like, okay, hold on, let me just, maybe something's wrong with your computer. Let me try something different. So one of the ones that people had recommended that, you know, it just works was Zorin. And I mm. did it, boom. I didn't even do any updates, and it found it. And that kind of was like that sealed the deal like okay this is an all this wasn't even like a rare machine it was just a very standard all in one and that fact that mint did not have these default features mm. and that i was having to search for it and like try to install things like via the command line that's what kind of put me onto zorn is if there was one recommended for it's super easy to get into it's very simple there are a lot of things that are kind of locked down mm. about it but that also means that you can't really mess it up. Right. Okay, okay. I should definitely give Zorin a look. And I, d I do think that model of having, like, a, a paid version is really cool. Um, It's not the same as, like, Zorin Pro, but Critter is available over on Steam. Um, And you can just buy Critter. Mm -hmm. I think it's, like, $15 or something like that. Basically acts as, don as a uh, donation to the project. I don't know how it would go. Like, it's a bit weird in the the FOSS space because you have people who are very much sort of, I guess, ideological purists with it. Where if you did have a version where they were selling a like a version that had more features, there would be people. There there would definitely be a lot of like uproar about that. If the code's available and you can compile it yourself, like. The, it's not. It's nowhere near as bad, right? People are going to complain about that, but like you still have everything there. But I, I don't know. It there is there are a lot of a lot of opinions about how things should be managed and what should be done. I think I think having a donation built into the download is. I don't think anyone really has a reason to complain about that, like uh, Elementary OS does. When you download it, there's the option to pay a certain amount, or you can enter zero and just download it directly. That, I think, is... I don't think anyone... People are going to whine about it because they see the word purchase and they don't read, and they don't, they don't see actually what's happening. But, I don't know, it... Being in the position I'm in, I've heard a lot of different voices from all, like, levels of interest in free software and i just know like i I just, I just know there would be a lot of voices that would have things to say about it yeah it's one of those things you can't put the genie back in the bottle i think is right, the term right and you know for those who are already just completely free if th there would be outrage i mean imagine gimp suddenly charging $10 per download or something like that. Well, not even for, like, um, the basic download, but I, I think having a pro version. Like, the, the basic download, I can understand why people might be annoyed, but even just additional things, like, a, a, maybe, yeah. like a, maybe there's some codec that you need to pay for to include or something like that for, like, a video editor. Yeah, my my viewpoint on it is like, look, people, th this these things aren't free. Not only the developers' time, obviously, like we've been already kind of sweeping that under the rug for a long time. Mm -hmm. But 
you also have to pay for codec licensing and things like that. Um, H.264, I think, is owned by, it's NVIDIA, right? Um, Sounds right. It's Somebody owns the codec for that. And so, you know, obviously FFmpeg has done a fantastic job of kind of making it to where you can use it and stuff like that. Um, but there are so many aspects that go into software development. Um, and again, just the labor of the, of the developers themselves is worth some money right there. Sure. But it's like, if you add a pro version, like DaVinci Resolve, it's not open source, but they have a free version that's fully functional. Mm -hmm. You can use the free version and you might have a couple of workarounds because again, codecs for that situation. But it works and you can just go use it for free. So if you are somebody who wants to do that, go use it for free. But a professional like myself who needs the extra codecs and, and uh, plugins and stuff, mm -hmm. I have, I think, five or six copies of DaVinci Resolve Studio. <laughs> so, I mean, I've gone out and I've, you know, some have come with cameras I've bought and stuff like that too, but I've bought DaVinci Resolve on its own mm -hmm. and it's worth it to me. Those extra codecs, the um, extra, you know, um, noise reduction features and stuff like that are worth it. Um, and if, you know, is obviously, you know, not a charitable work on the side of Blackmagic Design, but somebody like Zorin OS, you know, if I've got five computers upgrading every once in a while for 50 bucks, sounds like a great deal to me. I mean, Windows is 150 itself. Mm -hmm. So why not support a project I believe in and, and give them, you know, a, uh, another extra set of, um, wallpapers and, and, uh, themes and stuff for it. Mm -hmm. You know something fun about our Windows there, about it, about the price of Windows? I was at a McDonald's the other day, and um, I don't know how it happened, but their kiosk software crashed, and it was on the Windows desktop. I look in the bottom corner. It had Activate Windows. It had to register their Windows. <laughs> yeah. Save it on that license. See, the but, funny thing is, like, I'm probably very opposite of a lot of Linux users. I'm fine with paying. Mm -hmm. In many cases, I want to pay. You know, but honestly, the donation thing is is kind of uh, a hard one even for me because it again that open ended question of like you know hey if you want to support us send us some money mm. you know it's and I've done it and it's it's a good thing to do but it's like if you give me an actual reason to put in right. my credit card it's far more justifiable and for businesses coming from as a business owner perspective it, I don't know what country you know uh, different countries do and all that kind of stuff but at least in the U S. There's, you know, certain benefits to buying things. Mm -hmm. And so giving giving things out in a pro tier, just it just makes sense to me. I think that's a great way of doing it. I mean, a Kden Live Pro mm -hmm. would be fantastic because I've wanted, like, Blackmagic Raw support for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if they came out with that, I would not be upset at all. So you'd much rather have a clear place that the money is going to rather than just putting it into the ether and it just going yeah. to the project. Yeah. There's something about like actually buying a product versus, mm. um, you know, hopefully the developers maybe get this, it goes into a pool. I don't know, but mm. you know, there, there's, there's a little bit more of a transaction there right, between the right. developer and the user when there is an actual set price for this item, because it comes with these extra features. Okay. I can understand that. I guess you're approaching Linux from more of the professional perspective in that in that way. Like obviously you've been using it for like eleven years and you are like a Linux user, but a lot of the people in the Linux space are kind of they are why well, a lot of the people I know in the Linux space, they only use Linux as a hobby. They don't use it as a professional. Like maybe they use it as a professional in the context of, you know, they are a developer or they are a server maintainer, things like that. But even in that case, in a lot of in a lot of situations, you're just interacting with free stuff anyway. Like if you're a web developer, the majority of your stack you're probably not paying for. Like let's say you're using like VS Code and then the library you're using is gonna be free, most likely open source, and then like any plugins you're using are probably gonna be free and open source as well. Like or if you're maintaining a server, you're probably running maybe like a Debian or something like that. Like, but if you're, I guess from the, the, the video production side, it's fairly normal for professional software, professional grade software to have some sort of a price tag attached to it. 
Oh, it definitely is. I mean, you know, you're paying seven hundred ish dollars a year for the Adobe subscription. Um, DaVinci Resolve is three hundred dollars. It's one time. Their pricing structure is way cheaper than anything else, mm -hmm. uh, and DaVinci Resolve is way better. Um, and you know, everywhere you turn, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. There's more ways to spend money. I mean, mm -hmm. trust me, we have. Many cinema cameras, that's not cheap. We have many tripods, which when you get the professional ones, they're a lot more expensive than you'd think. The lighting, the sound, there's money all over the place that has to get spent on this. And so I am more than happy to you know, pay for um, our software on, on Linux. And, and that's the thing is if, if any developer comes out with a, ver I'll be honest, I haven't used Lightworks full time in a long time, but mm -hmm. I always renew my Lightworks subscription and download and install the, the Linux version because I, I like the fact that they're there and they're offering such a great tool mm -hmm. for Linux. Um, Autodesk, uh, or sorry, not Autodesk, um, Autograph um, was very similar, mm -hmm. um, but they just got bought by Maxon, so we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> but um, so it's just like if, if you guys, if a developer brings your tool to Linux, I'm definitely going to be using it mm -hmm. um, in one shape or another. Um, and I know I'm kind of abnormal in my in my thought process on, mm -hmm. you know, the way to charge for it and stuff like that. But I think it would be one of those things. It's, you know, as long as you offer the free version and you're kind of like we were talking about, honestly, a callback to what we were talking about with some of the YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. As long as your spirit is still there, the same nature of your project is still there. You know, you're offering it as an open source project and um, all that kind of stuff. Your your compiled version with these extra features being charged is fine. Mm -hmm. um, and it helps you fund your developers. It helps you bring a better product to the table. Please do it. Yeah, I just had a look at Lightworks, and it's actually a lot cheaper than I thought it was. Like, it's not that bad. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's converting it to Australian prices or this is the US price, but the one-time pro purchase is $420, which... Yeah, yeah that's, that sounds right. I think it's a bit cheaper than DaVinci is. Uh, DaVinci is three hundred dollars uh, one time. Okay, okay. Um, for the outright license, mm -hmm. uh, but there's been talk about whether they're going to charge for it again or something like that. But sure, sure, sure. Um, the free version of DaVinci Resolve is definitely far more capable than the Lightworks version, mm -hmm. uh, just because like Lightworks, you're limited to 720p on the free version. So Ugh. that's it's a little frustrating. If they could at least offer 1080, that would yeah. be that would be a lot nicer. Yeah, that feels like. We have a free version, but like, we don't actually yeah. want you to use it. And I think there's a 30 minute edit limit, but I could be wrong on that. <laughs> but I don't know. It, it, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, there's DaVinci, so use DaVinci. <laughs> do you use DaVinci? Yeah, exactly. No, it's, it's cool that there are, there are options like this that do exist. Like, I, I use the all the just free and open source stuff, but I know there are a lot of a lot of people in the Linux space who do use tools like DaVinci. I want to say... I want to say Nick from the Linux experiment uses DaVinci, but I could be mistaken there. And I know a couple of other I people do right. as well. It, yeah, I think he does. I've, I, I've been tempted to learn it, but I, I even if I did, I would just be doing the very little editing I do anyway, which is basically splicing clips together. Honestly, I could yeah. do the majority of my video editing I could do with a, a command line FFmpeg script. <laughs> 